Uh, my name is Shama. I'm the program director of Girls and Geese, and I am here with Tori. Tori, how's it going? It is doing fantastic in the crazy, crazy world of Florida. And then, of course, we have our lovely, lovely instructor here today. We've got Hillary Van Ornum. How are you doing, Hillary? I'm good. Um, I, the technique I'm going to show is just a kind of pressure pass into a bow and arrow choke. That, that's my favorite, and any kind of pressure passing is also my favorite. Um, so, yeah, some of my favorite stuff that I like to do and try to do on my husband all the time right now. So I'm going to bring out my lovely assistant, husband, training partner, co-owner, co-coach. And we've also got our other assistant coach, Bella, here, our almost 15-year-old pug. She's asleep on the job as normal. <laughs> So I'm gonna start from half guard. So the first thing, one thing I like to do in half guard is I like to sit heavy on the leg that he still has the guard. It is the half guard. So I like to sit heavy on it so he can't move, especially if I roll with, um, or in competition, like the open weight class and the little tiny girls, I need to hold them down. Um, so that's something I like to try to stay heavy and this is also for my MMA days. I like to uh, cup, this is the MMA thing, just side note, cup here, you can punch and you can like ride them around like this. It's kind of, I don't know, I really like half guard. I learned the half guard stuff from MMA from Ed Herman, who's a UFC fighter and he's great. Anyway, um, half guard pass it. So I'm sitting heavy on, on his leg. I'm gonna get a deep cross face with my left hand. I wanna get it and grab this little piece of fabric in his, el in his armpit and then try to drive my elbow towards this guy and turn his face over. Now I need to get my right leg that's caught in his half guard free. So all this by getting this underhook and I kind of like itsy bitsy spider. And I'm like, yeah, you can see that. I really drive my shoulder in. If I can TP up and get that leg free, I may have to take this hand and kind of push. But as soon as my leg gets free, my knee gets free, I drive it to the mat. Walk this up more really drive my shoulder. This is where I say, sorry, babe. Drive my shoulder in, peek up, use his, my feet to block his hips and come right to the mount. We'll do this from a couple angles. So, here we go. Again, half guard, I'm heavy. I may even block this hip. Deep cross face, underhook, kind of walk my feet towards his butt to get that knee free. When I get the knee free, I drive it to the mat. Walk it up. Turn this hip open and come right to the mat. Okay, head that way. This is our 360 angle. After, heavy. Cross face. Deep me up, get my knee to the mat. Both feet on his hips and slide them out. Head that way. Yeah. Okay, we're still good. Heavy cross legs. Walk it up. Knee on the ground. Spread his hips. There we go. And go to mount. Do you guys have any questions yet? No? Okay. I'm going to go to the choke from there. So I'm going to do the whole thing from here again. The heavy, get the cross face, knee on the mat. Here I want to pressure. And like, if my chest gets in his face, oh well. Now here, I can try to work on attacking this arm, but he's gonna know this arm is in danger. So I may, you know, kind of come over, try to work a key lock, but as soon as he feels that, he's probably gonna turn away to protect that arm. So I'll help him. Bring this knee up, so it's kind of like a pillow. And this is my, one of my first coaches, uh, Fabio Turner, called this the bow and arrow, the good night Cinderella. So I say, good night Cinderella. I grab his collar, grab his pants, and I sit back over this hip. Bring my leg over. I like to cross my legs and my feet, and I pull. 
We'll do that from a couple angles, just the bow and arrow part. One here. I say, oh, I want this arm just keeping. I pop up. Also, this foot is close to his hip, keeping it tight there so he can't get his guard back. I want to keep my chest low on his back. Loose. Grab his pants. And then I'm sitting back over this hip. If I fall straight back, I'm going to pull him right on my lap. I don't want that. I come this way. Here. Finish. Let's just do that side. They don't need to see the feet side. Get over here. Pass it over. And here's where this foot, right up in his hip. So he can't go away. Stay nice and tight. Grab his pants. Sit back. I like to really put my leg over so I can really extend him and pull. Let's do the front view. Another thing I'll do if I'm in mount and I want the bow and arrow is I'll bring this foot up, this leg up, and be like, go that way. Just go. Thanks, babe. If I can't reach his pants, let's turn sideways. Or he's wearing like skinny jeans. I can just come behind his head or his arm like this. And I can even fall back and go here. And also with the fats there and that the choke's not working, I can go right to the arm bar. A little bit back down. I like that. Or if I just want to finish, I can go here and just come right here. And I really think about chopping his head into this hand. So I'm chopping with this hand and I'm pulling this behind his head. So that. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions or did you, were you able to see all that okay? Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So is, um, we'll go ahead and start with the Q and A portion of it. If that's all you have, you have to share with us for today. I mean, I, there's always more I could show, but that's what I had planned. There's, all, there's always more. Um, let me see what we have in our chat really quick. It seems like a lot, what I was noticing, um, I had some questions for myself and what we're getting in here. Erica asked if, um, if you can go to the arm bar from there. So one of my questions was, is it seems like there's a bunch of different transitions you can get from that um, head and arm position. So but literally on my notes, I have pants too tight. What do you do? So um, you would go straight to the arm bar or can you hook no. the leg or is there anything else? That's when I go straight behind his head. Okay. Um, yeah, or if they're like, Brian's 6'3 and I'm 5'10, so maybe I can't reach his pants. I just come here and I can still go back to the bow and arrow. I can even grab my own collar and sit back. And here I can still do the chopping action into the back of his head. I rarely go for this arm bar when I get this. Um, I'm thinking, most of the time I finish the bow and arrow from there. I think there was one time in Masters Worlds I did go for the arm bar, but like time expired, so I didn't get it. But I mainly get the choke there. And I think, with the bow and arrow, a lot of people don't put the leg over the shoulder, but I find, especially with these legs, if I get my leg over your shoulder and I can really extend you, you're gonna tap. So I think right. that's a key piece. You can do the bow and arrow without the leg over the shoulder, but I've just found it's so much stronger. As a fellow woman with big thighs, I get you. Once that leg goes over, it's like, you can try, but we'll see how far it goes from there. Um, and, well, another thing about the bow and arrow that um, I try, I tend to get a looser grip on their collar. If you get it too tight and you go for it, your wrist can get kind of jacked up because mm -hmm. you're too tight. So the looser it is, you can just keep pulling further. So gotcha. So what you do is so instead of going too far up in the collar, you just slide down and get like closer to the chest. I try about collarbone or maybe between collarbone and like nipple. Gotcha. I was waiting for you to say it first, but yeah. Okay, that's one of the problems personally I had with it is I my grip was always, and you get the weak wrist feeling, 
gotcha. All right, let's see what else we have here. Do, do, do. Well, I always have questions. So um, as soon as she said pressure pass, I was super excited. Do you, do you find yourself like easing off on pressure in a competition setting? Um, no, okay. I, I've had this question asked a couple of times that in practice, um, some of the larger girls, they push, they, they ease up on their pressure. So when they go into competition, they don't do the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, it's still something I struggle with. Like yesterday when we were driving home, I, I asked my husband, I was like, hey babe, was I too, was I too much of a bully today? Cause sometimes I turn it on and I weigh more than he does. And, but he, and then I, I stopped myself and I'm, I, I'm stopping asking that question. And we had this conversation yesterday and I said, please tell me if I'm being like too much of a bitch or I'm being too, too bullying or I'm be going harder than you'd want me to. Please just tell me and I'll ease off. But I'm going to stop asking. Is that okay? Um, a lot of my students are a lot smaller than me. I mean, I'm, I'm typically the biggest girl in my division, even at Black Belt, except against Gabby. Um, so, but back but teaching, I can't like smash my 130 pound blue belt. It's, yeah. So, but when I go with my husband or I go against the guys that I know can handle it or I roll with brown or black belt women, I'm getting better about it. And some of my teammates up in Seattle, um, Sean and Becca, like, I guess my boobs are a problem to some of the girls in Seattle. <laughs> they go back home to Foster's and they're like, what do we do with Hillary's boobs? And I'm like, I don't know, you just gotta deal with them. Cause I, I told my girls like use them, be proud of them and use them and get you know, use them behind like the shoulder to get the choke in and like- Absolutely. Doing that pass, like my, like, that's my husband, so it's fine. Or you're gonna yeah, go, yeah. go to a guy like where my boobs are in their face, but another girl, Absolutely. I'm really glad that you said that you had to stop asking yourself because um, in the Mighty Dames, we get questions about this the whole time as when can they go and when should we ease off? And I love that you said you had that conversation with your husband, like you have the conversations with your training partner, like, look, it's going down today. Are you just letting you know? Um, and like the boobs, they do what they have to do. I mean, it's a part of your body. You use it how you can. <laughs> well, I have this, like, one of my old coaches would say, like, he was a uh, featherweight, he was like 145, and I'm well over 200 pounds, but he would say the fast people don't apologize for being fast and quick, flexible people don't apologize for being flexible, so don't apologize for being big and strong, and having one of my coaches now is James Foster, and he's 6'5", and over 300 pounds, and I mean, he, he doesn't, he can kill me, he does kill me, but he doesn't put it on all the time, but he knows when he can. And I mean, it, it's just part of the game. Like everybody, I think one thing about jujitsu is there's a benefit to every body type. So use it. You know what? I'm just like, I'm giving you like mini applause in my head right now. Cause we have these exact same conversations about using the body that you have. Cause, I mean, it's yours. Why not go ahead and do it? Uh, let's see here. How are you finding, um, how are you finding you're adjusting to this, to training, like on this one-on-one -on -one basis? Have your, um, have your students been reaching out to you more than before? Are you finding like you're actually able to work more intensely on certain things you hadn't been working on because you have more time? With the students, we have, we have our Facebook group and we have actually this text message group that's like, I'm looking at my husband, like 20 people-ish of our students and I'm, I think my phone's on mute right now. It kind of blows up like all day. So we're keeping in touch more, I think, than we were before. And that's pretty cool. I mean, our gym is still pretty new. We're not even a year old yet. Um, but I think we're keeping in better touch now. And I want to start I talking to my husband. My, uh, it's my husband and my brother and I own this gym. So and we're still pretty small, but I want to start reaching out to our students like once a week and just if you haven't heard from them, just checking in to make sure they're okay. Because that's one thing I'm I'm concerned about people right now who use jujitsu as therapy for like mental, physical that yeah. aren't. In so, I, yeah, I'm gonna start reaching out to more people. I've been reaching out to 
like my friends of the jiu-jitsu community from around the country. Like I've talked to Rhonda Andrews, who's one of my best friends. I talk to her pretty much every day and she's in Vegas. Um, I've been talking, talking to Dominica a couple times a week, checking in with Dom in New York. Um, so that's been good to keep communicating with people. Um, yeah, but as far as my own training, yeah, I mean, I'm, I think I'm training more now. Um, I'm definitely working out more now than before. And it's kind of nice to have this time. Um, my body is kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm in my 40s now. And like, I, I used to run half marathons. Like, I don't, I'm clearly. On purpose? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think partly to prove that I could. Um, but going out for five miles used to be like, that was nothing. And I'm like, whew. But it's been kind of nice. I've been trying to use this time to do stuff that I don't normally have time for. That's, that's awesome. I figure if, if we have this free time, basically we should try to be at least somewhat productive. So yeah. that's not, it's, as someone who is not being that productive, it's nice to hear that there is someone actually doing it. Um, I'll tell you now from looking at the, looking at the questions in the comments, you have a lot of proud unicorns <laughs> represent for you out there. They're super excited to have you on. Um, so I did wanna ask you one more question. So what, if you could give everyone just like one piece of advice to get through this, let's just call the situation <laughs> that we're dealing with right now, either from the jujitsu side, or like you said, um, um, mental, mental health wise, just to, to bite their knuck, how, what would you say to like your average person? Like I'm struggling right now. How do I, what am I to do? Bear with me on this one. No pressure or anything. On my, on my walks the past couple of weeks, I've been listening to a lot of Tony Robbins, which I know he's kind of polarizing. Some people love him, some people don't. Um, one of my old coaches was really big into him, and I see a lot of his coaching through what I hear in Tony Robbins, but just focusing on positive things, like, and focusing on what we can control. We, you know... People are talking about like reopening and setting a date. And like, I don't want to set a date because I don't want to set a date and then have be disappointed and not be able to control it. So yeah. if we can focus on the things we can control and focus on the positive things, like we still have members supporting us. That's a good thing. We still, I have my husband, he and I can still train and we're trying, I'm trying not to like post about that very much right now because I don't want to like, make people that aren't in that situation that don't have someone they can train with yeah about not being able to train um i'm i'm so lucky that i have this place that our landlord's working with us and he's been great we we have a place to live like i'm finally getting my unemployment checks like yay yeah claps for the unemployment coming in <laughs> um i'm trying not to another thing i'm working on with myself is like my body image issues like i've had them my whole life and it's, I, it is what I, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so just trying to like be thankful that my body could take me five miles today and then be able to show jujitsu stuff on my husband. And I'm so, Shauna, thank you so much for having me on this. Like being able to reach more women and oh, I mean, there could be some guys out there watching. I hope there are. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I think just focusing on what you can control and focusing on being positive and what you have. Um, that's a Tony Robbins thing of like, if you keep focusing on what you don't have, that's all you're gonna think about and see. Um, a thing that my old coach would say from Tony Robbins, I think, was don't think about blue, don't think about blue, don't think about blue. Well, what are you thinking about? Blue. Yeah. So like, let's focus on the good stuff. I guess that's my biggest thing. And try to do something physical every day, even if it's out going for a walk for like 20 minutes getting physically active and doing something positive for yourself, it'll make you feel better inside and out. No. That was like the perfect response. Let me just say that that's, <laughs> that's perfect. Um, as someone else who struggles like lifelong battle with um, body image, body confidence, self-worth, it's nice. I'm not saying it's nice to hear that you struggle with that too, but it is, it's a little comforting to find someone who even at the elite levels um, who's been in this sport for so long still has those kind of things that they're um, they're working on. It, it 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 helps to 
letting other people know that they're also having some area of struggle, I think it helps to um, unite us all. So thank you for being upfront about that and letting us know. Um, I've had a great time chatting with you. Thank you for joining us today. This has been a treat. I can go on and on about the body image stuff too. I mean, oh, we will talk again. <laughs> I like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, I mean, so I did MMA for a while and I got down to like 190 ish. And I still thought I was like big. And now I look back at those pictures in that time and I'm like, oh my God, I wish I was like close to that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I feel like we always have, what we, or we want what we don't have. And no, absolutely. It used to be and like, oh, well, maybe I could get back there. Yeah, but I'm in my 40s now. Like, this is just, I don't know, my body. No, I think you do a great job in, you know, um, just you're such a great example of loving yourself for who you are and being proud of that. And I think that for all women, that's such a huge struggle that we all have, regardless of what our size is. We always have something we want to fix about ourselves, right? And like, I just turned, I turned 40 last year too. And I feel like it's kind of freeing because you're like, well, oh, well, <laughs> this is me. I love me for me. And I, I, I imagine it only gets better as we get older and a little bit wiser, you know? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, wrinkles. oh no <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> it's always something one after the other but no but that's when i do something dye my hair purple like i can control that i can you know, <laughs> maybe pink tomorrow i don't know <laughs> uh, oh well, it's always a pleasure working with you i love having you a part of uh girls and geese i love having your support um you're just, again, you're just such a phenomenal role model for all women, for all jujitsu players, I would say, not even just women, you know? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'd love to work with you again. So we will be in touch. And thank you so much for being on the Technique of the Week segment and sharing some of your special unicorn magic with us. <laughs> And um, just a side note, like I'm posting our, we do these Tabata workouts three days a week. Um, I post those on my Instagram page and then I have like in the stories, there's like highlight highlights. So I post those every, every day that we do them. And then I'm also a yoga instructor. So I've been posting some yoga flows just that help me. Um, we normally do a yoga class after every jujitsu class Monday through Thursday here. Um, and I know a lot of our students have really liked it. A lot of the guys are like, wow, I'm actually, I can touch my toes now. <laughs> um, but all that stuff's on Instagram. My Instagram's just unicorn underscore jujitsu. Is that right? And then our gym is unicorn jujitsu PDX, which PDX is the short code for Portland. So yeah. And if anybody ever has any questions, they can always message me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm, I try to be pretty responsive and yeah, anything. Thank you again, and we will uh, we will be seeing more of you soon. And uh, thank you to everyone out there watching today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to my partner in crime, Tori O'Neill of hey, uh, the Mighty you, Dames. Call me your partner in crime, then I have to come back. Oh, I, well, you know, we just <laughs> might have to. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again, everybody out there, and stay tuned. We got a lot more going on this week here at Girls and Geese.